Good morning. Is God against Damascus? Today our readings at Jeremiah chapter 49 verses 23 through 33. Against Damascus, Hamath and Arpet are ashamed, for they have heard bad news, they are faint-hearted. There is trouble on the sea, it cannot be quiet. Damascus has grown feeble, she turns to flee, and fear has seized her, and anguish and sorrows have taken her like a woman in labor. Why is the city of praise not deserted, the city of my joy? Therefore her young men shall fall in the streets, and all the men of war shall be cut off in that day, says the Lord of hosts. I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it shall consume the palaces of Ben-Hadad. Against Kedar and against the kingdoms of Hazor, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, shall strike. Thus says the Lord, Arise, go up to Kedar, and devastate the men of the east. Their tents and their flocks they shall take away. They shall take for themselves their curtains, all their vessels and their camels. And they shall cry out to them, Fear is on every side. Flee, get far away, dwell in the depths, O inhabitants of Hazor, says the Lord. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has taken counsel against you and has conceived a plan against you. Arise, go up to the wealthy nation that dwells securely, says the Lord, which has neither gates nor bars, dwelling alone. Their camels shall be for booty, and the multitude of their cattle for plunder. I will scatter to all winds those in the farthest corners, and I will bring their calamity from all its sides, says the Lord. Hazor shall be a dwelling for jackals, a desolation forever. No one shall reside there, nor son of man dwell in it. So the sixth nation in this series of judgments is Damascus, roughly the area of our modern-day Syria. Damascus has special significance because it's located at the convergence of the two major trade routes, the the route going along the Mediterranean, along the coast, and back and forth through Egypt and all through there. And then there's an east-west route also that goes out to the coastal cities, Tyre and Sidon, and into the inland where the Arabian Desert and the Fertile Crescent is going over. Now, politically, Damascus has kind of limited significance, but we're looking at three outfits here, not only Damascus, but also Kedar and Hazor. Those two groups are from the desert area to the east. But their inclusion here brings us to uh, eight nations we've listed so far, eight nations of significance that are put in here as being judged. So it's very clear that no nation escapes God's scrutiny. No nation escapes his moral judgments. All are going to be judged, and in apparently every case, just about all the nations come up short. Why is it that human kingdoms tend to abandon things of spiritual significance and just become reduced to the material and the things of power and wealth? But that seems to be the way it is. We have a tendency to lower our vision from the higher to the lower, from the high principles to the lower principles of mere self-service. It's not just people, but nations do that. Things seem to turn into the idea of self-glorification, but you know what? Jeremiah never loses his way. Jeremiah is always here looking for God's purposes. He's always looking up higher. Jeremiah never gets it wrong and begins to go political. He never goes horizontal. He always keeps things on the spiritual terms. But what do we do? We tend to go horizontal. We tend to begin to worry about the things that are being said, the things that are being done politically. These things come and go. What is the chaff to the wheat? Jeremiah's got it right, and he's noticing that all nations are judged. Well, that's going to be true. So let's keep our focus on the things of God, and God will help us with that. We'll be fine. If Jeremiah can get it right, then we can get it right too. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, Human secular politics is to be expected. We understand it will be around us, but Lord, we don't want to be trapped by it. We don't want to be confused by it. So please help us, Lord, to keep our eye on the spiritual thing. Keep our focus on the kingdom things. And Lord, we will be your servants for the blessing of this world rather than some cheap halfway business with some human thing that's going to just devolve to the material. Help us to be right. Help us not to be sucked in in an age when everything seems so politicized. Help us to be spiritualized. Lord, this is our prayer today, and we ask for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So if Jeremiah had it right, we can have it right too. Let's be right with God. Let's not be distracted. Keep our eye on the ball. You have a wonderful day serving the Lord Jesus, being in the world but not of it.